thanks for clicking on the video. I've just spent three days on a deserted island in the middle of the ocean in Southeast Asia. During my three days, I found food, I caught food, I cooked food, I built shelter, I made fire. The only tools I had with me was a knife. I had no lighter, no matches, no food, no water. For three days, I thrived and I enjoyed it, I loved it. But in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the harsh reality of a deserted island. Many of us think that deserted islands are pristine, beautiful beaches. What we see behind me and all along this beach is human man-made waste. Let me show you what I mean. So straight away, you can see how much rubbish there is on this beach. This is a result of rubbish floating around in the ocean or even dumped into the rivers. And all the rubbish dumped in the rivers leads to the ocean, which then circulates and then gets blown up on deserted islands. On deserted islands where there's no resort, no staff to pick up the rubbish. So everywhere for the last three days, I've just seen rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. However, it isn't all that bad because rubbish, man-made rubbish in a survival situation can actually be your best friend. What I mean is that things like plastic bottles we can use to make solar stills and solar stills can produce fresh water, fresh drinking water. All you have to do is, well, let's save that for another video. So another thing that you can find on the beaches are things like bamboo. Okay, that's a natural material, great for building. You can see there's a bit of rope tied to it, I don't know why. And then we find lots of things like, yeah, there's cuttlefish, but everywhere you look, there's man-made stuff. So let's go a bit further up the tide mark. And you can, look, there's a bit of fishing net. So this is the sort of thing that drifts around the oceans for years and years, and they call it a ghost net. These will fish by themselves with no one there to go and collect them or check them. Basically, fish will swim into a floating net that's all tangled, the fish will get tangled and die. Other fish will come in to eat those dead fish and once again, they'll become tangled. Look, there's plastic here, there's a glass bottle there. Okay, so one thing I've become quite obsessed with over the last three days is any liquid in bottles. Oh, apart from that one. Oh. All right, I was saying that any liquid in bottles, I like to open the bottle and smell the liquid. I found one when I was here on day one and it smelt just like lemonade. And that smell, well, let's say I open it a few times a day and it reminds me of an ice cold lemonade. And another thing I found over the last three days, probably found about 40 or 50 of these flip-flop type shoes. And then there's just plastic bottles everywhere washed up, there's old coconuts. This is the harsh reality of being on a deserted island. You think it's pristine beaches, white sands, palm trees and coconuts, but in fact, it's human man-made rubbish. We are to blame for this. What's this? Oh, it's some sort of cream. It's some like, it's like some face paint. I think it's face paint. Luxurious beauty cream. One of those. But I don't think I need any beauty cream. Hey, I'm on an island, I've got no one to impress. Glass bottle. But in a survival situation, you could actually fill this with water and put it on the, over the coals of the fire and you can sterilize water in this. Whereas that, well, that's no good for me. What's this? A fishing float, a, a cigarette butt, and an old half a litre of a cup, plastic cup and a bit of polystyrene thing. What's this? This is a coconut that's been washed up. I doubt the water in that is any good because you can see all these barnacles growing on it. And this. Oh, what is this? Look how clean it looks in there. Perfect. You know what? That there, that there could be really good for sterilizing water. I might keep that. You don't want to go too many days living on coconuts because coconuts, when you drink the coconut water, it can, it can become a bit of a laxative. So a find like this is a really good find. Again, it's about the resources that are washed up that can become very useful in a survival situation. Then there's things like this big polystyrene box, another coconut there, uh, some coffee. What's this? That could be from like some kids paddling board some coffee sachets, this stuff, which is everywhere on the islands, a straw, these are really a, a cigarette. So you could actually argue that man-made waste could save your life when deserted on a, well, when stranded on a deserted island. But look at the reality. Look, there's plastic everywhere. 
everything has been washed up from big baskets. There's, what's this? Some sort of strap from a, like a truck. Um, more bottles, glass bottles, plastic bottles, plastic bags. More shoes, flip flops. Oh, oh. Nah, I don't think I'll be smelling that one. Or coconuts. Oh, another flip flop. Another flip flop, no, another flip flop there. The thing about these is you never find a matching pair. This should just be pristine beach, but it isn't. It's full of man-made waste. And these things, they look like medicine bottles, but in fact, these are like Red Bull. This is how Red Bull comes in Asia. One of those. That rope could be really useful when it comes to building a shelter. Plastic lids, bottles. What's that? It's like a little mini baby coconut straw. Another shoe. Another bottle. Woo, that's strong. Oh, that's whiskey. That's really strong. What are those? They're like, oh, it's a fabric softener. Hey, nice bowl. That could come in useful one day. And a fishing net. Look at how much fishing net has been washed up. It's just never ending. It just keeps going. And it's so hot. There's another one. Another one. Oh, there's a bit of a hot spot here. There's three. Look, four. No way. Five. No way. Look at that. Days. So I've been here for four days now. Let me show you where I've been sleeping. So first of all, I found a load of bamboo on the beach. And then I found some really thick rope. So what I've done is I've constructed this bit of a raised platform. It's more like a raised bed. I've taken the thick rope and I've made a loop, two loops hanging out the tree. And then using bamboo that I found, I've secured it to the rope. And I even found this cushion, which came in really handy last night when I was sleeping. This is it, this is, this is my bed. The last two nights. And up until then, I slept at another beach and I built another shelter. But I've got some basic, it's a very basic shelter. And it's off the ground, away from the scorpions and the snakes. Yeah, really nice. It just goes to show that using all this washed up stuff, whether it's man-made or natural, if you put your mind to it, you can really make yourself comfortable on a deserted island. In the middle of the night, I kept hearing the, these coconuts falling. The good thing is I'm not directly under a coconut tree, which is very important because the last thing you want is to be woken up by a coconut hitting you on the head. You'll find a lot of these coconuts. Oh, look, there's a crab there just about going the hole. You'll find a lot of these coconuts washed up on the beach, especially in the morning. For example, this morning I found this huge coconut. And then you'll find a lot of these coconuts, which as you can see, that's no good. This is what we're after, the green ones. What you'll also find is lots of net. Every, lots, of, lots of net and fishing line all tangled up in a big bunch. Look, you can see there, there's, there's a bit of fishing net. But this rope's really handy. I used some last night to create a fire by friction. So to make the fire last night, I found some dried wood and then I, I found some string. I found a bowed piece of wood. I tied the string to the bow. I made the components that I needed to make for the, what's called a bow drill. The way it works is by when wood is rubbed together rapidly, it, it creates smoke. And that smoke obviously comes from the heat, which creates a black dust. That dust gets really hot, eventually turns into a glowing ember. And then using some coconut husk, I made a little bird's nest and then I transferred my glowing ember to the coconut husk and blew yes. that into a flame. As soon as I got the flame, I put some very thin dry sticks on and then I proceeded to cook the fish that I caught with a hook that I found tangled up in amongst some net and I cooked it up in a metal container that I found on the beach. I found a mango tree along the beach. So I threw a few mangoes in, I threw in a few chunks of coconut, added some coconut liquid and then I added the fish. So I basically had a coconut mango and fish curry. And it was actually really nice. Of course I had to serve it up in a coconut shell and then use a shell that I found on the beach as my spoon. Look at that, it's like a big old, some sort of cargo bag. Listen to that. Hey, try sleeping with that going all night. 
If you haven't seen my video where I'm stranded on a deserted island for several days, then don't forget to check it out. There's a bit more net. See, these are all resources that could become useful for something at some point. But, oh look, there's some of that thick rope. So this is the sort of stuff I found a few days ago and then I built my hanging bed. Yeah, great stuff. Oh, I think I might have just spotted a fresh coconut fallen from that tree. It looks green. Sometimes they look green, but they've been eaten out by insects. Oh no, that's been eaten out by insects. Look at that. Oh look, what's this? Look at those red ants, they're going crazy. Nice net though. I've just found this net. So this you could probably use to make a drying rack for any fresh fish that you catch. That means that if you catch fish, you can slice it thin, lay it in the rack in the sunshine. And over here, it's about 37 degrees every day. It's really hot. And with a nice little breeze, that fish would dry in no time. And of course, dried fish will last, well, it's preserved, it will last a lot longer than fresh fish. So it takes the pressure off having to catch fish every single day. Look at that, there's a little baby coconut. Didn't even have a chance to form before it fell off the tree. So that is it for this video, where I've been deserted on an island for four days. This is the short version, it's just a walkthrough about island life and what you can expect to find on a deserted island. Remember, deserted islands aren't pristine white sand beaches covered in coconut palms and mango trees right up to the water's edge. Deserted islands are full of man-made waste, but waste that can become very useful in a survival situation. Whether it's creating fire, building shelters, building hunting tools such as fishing rods, or even purifying water from the salt water. Man-made resources washed up on an island or not can become very useful. So it's always good to know about what you can do with whatever you find on an island. Everything is useful when you're in a survival situation. So on that note, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the long version where I've been here for several days. Until then, goodbye.